nation plays a major role in the life of all people. It is a necessary one, and so it is a must for each and every one to develop their knowledge in that field to cope with the current situation. With the introduction of internet and the world wide web, the access to internet has become very easy, and the whole world is moving towards digitalization. <laughs> Then there is possible to see the electronic devices like mobile phones computers etc really wide across in every one's life likewise the big content also takes a major share in every field and every one's life big content means electronic content which is available in many subjects and also at all levels of education keeping it mind and also present scenario the organizers of this webinar have chosen this digital content as the core theme of this program here you have such a wonderful resource person who will clear all your doubts on this particular field you can enrich your knowledge on e content through this wonderful program i congratulate the organizers for their enthusiastic efforts and i wish the webinar to be a grand success thank you onanda oh inge mate thank you so much sir now i request dr antony sai chitra hod of bba department of patnar college of arts and science to introduce the chief guest of today mr charles durai i see dear attendees one kind request please uh, mute your microphones uh. i feel extremely happy to introduce the resource person charles durai assistant professor dq kaushal kendra loyola college uh, chennai he is also the official spokesperson of media for loyola college uh. he got his ba in economics from st joseph college trichy pg diploma in personal management and industrial relation from anamala university he got his ma and mphil in english from madras from madurai kamra university he completed his certificate course like celta that is certificate in english language teaching to adult learners from cambridge esol and british council mumbai trained the trainers from british council chennai starting e moderating by sponsored by british council our resource person has held up various positions uh, inside and outside uh, loyola college uh, he conducted more than 22 workshops and training programs uh, he is an expert in training the non technical people also he is an apt person for today's webinar i welcome you on behalf of the pg and research department of history raniyanna government college for women tunaveli and bba department of adithyanar college tiruchendur i hold heartily welcome once again everyone Dear attendees, my uh, kind request is that please productively utilize this work me now for your future development. Now I hand it over the session to our resource person, Charles Durai. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for the wonderful word of welcome. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Audible. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, before I begin the session, uh, I would like to first of all, uh, you know, wish everyone a, a wonderful morning. And um, uh, considering this as a, a great opportunity uh, and a great privilege, I would like to extend my uh, sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Jay, yes, Jay Kumar, Secretary of Aditya College. Dr. D.S. Mahadevan, Principal of Aditya College. I also would like to uh, uh, welcome and thank uh, all the, uh, the, the principals of both the institutions. And I would like to also thank those who've given the welcome address and, uh, you know, um, and, uh, 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 and for introducing me to the uh, to the participants. So I'd like to uh, thank the management of both institutions and the officials 
and all those organizers. And uh, I would like to begin this session now uh, by greeting everyone uh, a wonderful, I'm, I'm sure all of us will have a wonderful time today. All right. So um, let me uh, uh, move, uh, you know, let me start addressing yeah, the, the, the participants. Uh, before we, um, you know, uh, I just kind of uh, a request from all of us. I, I would request everyone else, you know, to mute your audio, please, till the, uh, you know, till the end of this session. We are going to have polls and we are going to use the chat box. So we will not need the, uh, the microphone. And uh, so I, I kindly request all of you to turn off the microphone, uh, you know, uh, till the end of the program. Oh, yeah, and no. uh, th thank you very much for that. Okay, so um, so feel relaxed. It's going to be a very interesting session. Uh, don't be don't be sitting tight, you know. And you know, what is this e content going to be? It's going to be a very terrific topic, you know. Don't worry, it's a, such a such an interesting topic, just an exciting topic, you know. Such a you know, we are going to be. I think we are going to be transformed, you know. And so uh, we should be we should feel happy about you know what's going to happen today. And uh, that's what I, I hope to, uh, you know, uh, happen today. Okay, I'd like to request the participants to kindly type in the chat box, you know, uh, the institution that you represent and the place you come from, you know, where the institution, your institution is, you know, located. Uh, can we see that in the chat box, uh, dear participants? You're going to have just about 30 seconds. Please type the name of the uh, institution uh, that you are part of and the uh, and the place if possible the place uh, if the, the some are from other side now outside tamil nadu you can mention like kerala karnataka so that first we will get to know who we are you know when we are on a uh, digital platform it's good to know at least uh, a little bit of each other yes uh, you 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 have just 30 to 40 seconds so can we do it quickly participants yes Okay, so wonderful. We have somebody from Yerod Arts and Science College. Very nice. Okay, Atomic Energy Central School, Kalpaka, wonderful. Yeah, all right, Ace Money, thank you, welcome. Uh, we have Elizabeth, very good, from Bellur. So, uh, Gavan Arts College, Pudukote, very nice. Okay, Arts College, Vyasapadi, yes. Okay, Jawahar Bharati Degree College, very nice, Kumbakonam. Tripura, wow. we have a Bridu uh, Debarma from Tripura. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, Debarma, uh, to this session. Okay, from Trinil Valley, of course, yes, hosts, yes. Meenakshi Government Arts and uh, College, very nice. Uh, we have Pudukote, people from Pudukote, from Yasarim, fantastic. Yes, I have been to Yasarim quite a few times. I interacted with some of the students there some years ago. And we also have. Uh, uh, I think people from Salem, wonderful. Thank you for joining. Uh, we have people from Chennai, wonderful. Okay, all right, yes. Uh, I think, uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, even those who have not been able to join in and those who are still trying to join in and in, in type it in the chat box, don't worry. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Okay, so uh, now let me proceed with uh, with the presentation, yes. Uh, a, a few seconds, please. Okay, that's all right. So, um, I think you're able to see the screen now. Okay, so uh, I would like to, uh, first of all, you know, just introduce the topic to the audience. You know, that's very, very important because uh, when, unless we know the topic, you know, uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, we will not be able to focus on what is going to happen today. So today's focus is on going to be on e-content. Some some of us uh, might pronounce it as e-content, uh, but the actual pronunciation is e-content because it's a noun. So the the syllable the stress falls on the first syllable con. So e-content, an educational tool for teaching and learning. So it's a tool which can be used effectively in our classrooms, that's what we're going to, we're going to discuss today. So I'm the presenter, Charles Thurey, Assistant Professor of Loyola College, and I work there at Kaushal Kendra, and uh, where we teach uh, journalism and uh, animation. And I, I'm sorry, I'm also uh, a trained trainer in English language teaching and uh, uh, non-technical skills, as already uh, uh, I've been introduced. 
So I'm also a Cambridge examiner. All right, so that's it. So we move on. All right. Okay. The first image, right. Okay. Um, so dear participants, I would like you to pay attention to this uh, uh, slide. Uh, it has, there is an image there. You would see an image here. Look at that very carefully. Uh, I'd like to ask you all a question. What is so special about this image? You might have come across this recently somewhere, you know, um, and I would like uh, you all to have a look at this picture and, uh, uh, and kindly type in the chat box, okay? So you're going to type in the chat box, um, what is so special about this picture? Can you type in the chat box? Uh, Deepama, can I see the chat box? I'm not able to see the chat box. Or you can help me with the re responses that are coming in. The organizers, anybody could help me with the, the responses that are coming in? Deepama, excuse me. Okay, that's fine, right. Now, so uh, we just move to the, fine, I'm not able to see your responses, fine, we will, we will go on with the presentation. Okay, so this um, is about, um, you can just see, this is Miss, uh, this is Miss Malvita, uh, a Pune-based chemistry teacher. So, uh, this news of her became viral recently on uh, the internet because this teacher has used, uh, you can just look at this here, teacher uses makeshift tripod to take online classes. Now, you can look at why this uh, teaches this program, this particular teacher uh, has become so viral is because, you know, it, the, the news says, a teacher uses makeshift tripod to take online classes. Internet is impressed with her jigard. Jigard is uh, 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 it's, uh, something that is something uh, you get, you know, uh, uh, simple things and you are able to do something big with that. But that is we call it a jigard. So the teacher is able to uh, uh, convert an ordinary event into an extraordinary event. What was available with her? Of course, during this COVID period, you know, it's, it's difficult to get whatever you need. But what has what's happened is that, you know, the teacher and uses... Uh, on your content. Because offline presentation, uh, preparation for presentation is different from online, uh, you know, uh, presentation. Hello. 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 Sir, you can continue. Ah, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, so, only thing is, I am not able to see the chat box in the in the um, in the panel. If you could just add that, it would be nice. I, I'm I'm continuing. Thank you. So, uh, the teacher uses uh, an ordinary thing. For example, you, know, you can just have a look at this again, and you know, these she uses. You can look at uh, the image again. You know, there is a there's a hanger there, and she has uh, tied her. A mobile phone to the hangar and she uh, is taking the cl her classes and it is being uh, you know telecast and uh, this is what I think has made her you know uh, very popular today so teachers and participants I think this is what we need to understand today our resources are resources are limited today but we are still you know, we have the responsibility of continuing to educate our learners and to find ways. And this is where I think this, this is a digital platform becomes 
very, very important. And thanks to Ms. Mawitha, a Pune-based teacher, you know, for her inspiration. Right, now, what is e-content? First, first of all, we need to understand what is e-content? What, what do we mean by e-content? All right, so e-content, you know, according to the dictionary meaning, it says it is a, a digital content and images design, designed for display on web pages. So whatever uh, uh, resources or whatever uh, 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 materials that we use to uh, uh, on a digital platform can be called e-content. Now, uh, before we proceed, and I, I would like you to, you know, look at this um, uh, uh, a slide next is, you know, I would like to keep this as a kind of a, uh, something to motivate us throughout this uh, presentation, right? Uh, this uh, says technology will never replace a great teacher, but technology in the hands of a great teacher is transformational. It has been said by George Kuros from, uh, from, he's from Canada and he's an educator. And, uh, and he says that technology will never replace a great teacher, but technology in the hands of a great teacher is transformational. Uh, dear participants, I'd like you to look at these three key words here. I'm sure you would be able to identify those three words. The first one is, technology. The second one is teacher. And the third one is transformational. Now we are, uh, we are basically as teachers, as educators, we are basically our, uh, uh, you know, our mission or our, our responsibility is not to teach, just to teach, of course, to teach is very important. But I think more than that, you know, we need to transform you know, the, the students, you know, who have been given to us. And that's, I think he is rightly put. So technology will never replace a great teacher, but technology in the hands of a great teacher is transformational. The next one that is uh, about, uh, um, okay. So the next quote, I, I, I request you all to, you know, look at very carefully and very closely, dear participants is, you know, Technology will not replace teachers. Teachers who use technology will probably replace those who do not by Ray Clifford. This is a second quote that I thought, you know, uh, would be a, a right thing to focus on. You know, they would, uh, these two quotes are going to be uh, actually, you know, uh, helping us to re reflect further. So, uh, it's a kind of, I think it's a kind of a caution for us teachers today or for us educators today. If you, if you want to be, if you want to continue in our profession, right? If you want to continue in our profession, I, I think, uh, and I think, you know, uh, uh, learning to use technology is going to be very important. Otherwise, we would be left behind. Or those teachers with technology, you know, uh, will, would have an edge over the authors. So if you want to be, you know, effective, you know, uh, very uh, 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 effective teachers today, uh, uh, I think it is very important that we uh, use technology, you know, uh, uh, as required. Now, next we will uh, start thinking about forms of e-content. What are the different forms of e-content? Now we know e-content is electronic content. Whatever we use on a digital platform is e-content or electronic content. And, and what are the different forms of e-content? I think let's just have a look at it. So you can have a look at it. You know, we have research papers. You can just take a, 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 a few, you know, uh, maybe uh, some seconds to just go through it. You know, I just read some of the important ones. We have wikis where People come together to create certain pages, you know, create a web page with certain information. Like we, we have Wikipedia, we have blogs, a website, websites, a podcast. Then you have uh, research data, audio files, images. All right. So uh, email. So a whole lot of things. The whole gamut of you know uh, electronic uh, 
uh, content and materials that we use, I think uh, we call them, you know, they, are, they have, uh, they are called, you know, forms of e-content and they are manifested in different forms. So why is, you know, e-content important, e-teaching important, e-learning important, right? And I think that is what I think it is very important to reflect on today. And I think we are going to spend, it would be nice if you could spend some time on, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the activities and, you know, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, what the Ministry of Human Resource Development, you know, the government of India is uh, trying to tell us, I think that's very, very important as we are part of higher education department. I think we are all, uh, we all belong to higher education sector. I think it's very important to get to know about, you know, the, uh, the various uh, things that the MHRD department is trying to promote with regard to uh, e-learning e or e-teaching. Uh, 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 participants, kindly look at this, uh, 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 this uh, the headline here. 75 institutions have been identified to act as national resource centers, uh, the YANASIs, to prepare online training material for massive open online courses, MOOCs, we call it, you know, MOOCs. Is a, so, we are talking about, you know, LMS, that's a learning management system. We are talking about Moodle, you know, you know, uh, you know creating Mo provision for Moodle or LMS in our, you know, college websites. Now, please, uh, I think we need to be very clear, you know, about the, uh, the things that the MHRD uh, of our country, you know, is trying to, you know, tell us, try to communicate to us. So, it is very important to look at this, you know, there's a national resource centers to prepare online training. Now, if you're going to be, you're not only going to be teachers in the classrooms, but I think it's a time, it is time, it is high time that we become proficient, you know, uh, in or with online training for which we need to use online training materials. And it is important that we get to know uh, technology and how to use technology in this process, right? So there were days when education was separate, technology was separate, you know, those days, gone are those days. Now we have days of Web 2.0, Web 3.0 we are moving to, we are moving to an age of artificial intelligence. And I think it's very, very important, uh, dear participants, dear educators, that, you know, uh, you know, the government's insistence on taking education online. This is very clear. The MHRD, you know, is very clear about this. And, and I think they are even going to fund those centers, you know, to, you know, who would promote this online training. And uh, why do they, you know, go in for online training? We might have our own you know, uh, you know, uh, preconceptions or uh, prejudices or fears, but I think we don't have to uh, be afraid of anything, but then let us try to understand what actually MHRD is trying to say. Now, you would have also come across Swayam. It's a platform where we can all, you know, from any corner of the world, you know, any corner of India, you can, uh, uh, you can join, you can log in, you can register and do a, an online course. Now, uh, about SWAYAM, I think we need to understand about SWAYAM. SWAYAM is a program initiated by the government of India designed to achieve the three cardinal principles of education policy. They are access, equity, and quality. I think these are three things we need to understand. Access, equity, and quality, AEQ. Now, what is access? See, the intention of the government or the aim of the government is, or the, uh, the aspiration of the government is that, you know, everybody, you know, be students in urban areas, students from outskirts, students from remote areas are able to learn and profit from this platform, Swayam, you know, even through, uh, you know, from a remote locations, that is what called access, making everything accessible, you know, to people. 
Of course, we do have challenges, right? We have a kind of digital divide where some can afford, some cannot afford. But I think uh, it is high time that, you know, uh, this is, we try to understand, you know, uh, the, the, what the government is trying to tell us. Second is equity. You know, everybody, you know, uh, uh, is offered the course, right? Anybody can join in and then continue the courses, equity and quality. And I think teachers, here is, I think we need to understand, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, uh, if you want to quality and standard in our teaching, as our sir had finally, you know, explained in the beginning, you know, in the interactive word, you know, we cannot go on with the chalk and talk method. Stored. Students find our classes, you know, you know, utterly uh, dull, you know, why? Because we still, we are holding on to the age old practices. And we will, we will, I will try to, uh, you know, show you, you know, how, you know, these things are, you know, uh, I'd like to show an example of one of my students, you know, so that we will try to understand this better. So if you want quality in teaching, or if you want innovation, creativity in our, in our teaching, right? And if you want to provide variation, right? If you want to improvise our ways of teaching, I think we cannot achieve with just a chalk and the blackboard, there is something more to it. And I think that is e-content. So this, the objective of this effort, I'm continue, let me continue. The objective of this effort is to take the best teaching learning resources to all. I underline best teaching learning resources to all, including the most disadvantaged. Swayam seeks to bridge the digital divide I just spoke about uh, the digital divide for students who have hitherto remained untouched by the digital revolution and have not been able to join the mainstream of the knowledge economy. And in this regard, I just wanted to uh, I just make a mention about, you know, uh, our own college in you know, a Loyola college, you know, I just uh, not so that we'll be able to understand better. Yesterday, we received a communication from our principal. You know, uh, our, our college has been asking uh, teachers to be in touch with every student during this COVID period and try to talk to them, try to find out what the problems they are facing. If they have, if they are facing problems with regard to infrastructure, for example, they don't have the devices, you know, to browse through the website or maybe the online classes being offered. So try to collect details. Let, we will try to see how best we can offer support to our students. So I, I just uh, 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 got this circular, you know, this has been uh, this is being insisted by our college you know since the lockdown and this is you know it's it it i think our, our management continues to insist on this you know this uh, bridging this gap of this uh, a digital divide so all can join the mainstream of the uh, of the knowledge economy next okay next i would like to move to this uh, uh, next one is again from Swayam. I, I just uh, uh, stumbled upon this, swayam.gov.in. That's why I'm providing references, right? The educators must understand that the use of digital content and devices will improve <laughs> Improve teaching. And, uh, participants, can I request all of you to turn off your microphone, please? I request everyone, everyone to please uh, kindly turn off your microphone so that, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, we can go on without any interruption. I'm sorry, uh, uh, participants, for the interruption. Okay, right. Let's continue. So educators must understand that the use of digital content and devices will improve teaching and learning and thus enhance educational opportunities and benefit the millennial. Now, I think we need to under, underline these words, enhance educational opportunities and benefit the millennial. Now we are dealing with a millennial. You know, the way we dressed up, you know, and the way uh, the, 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 the current generation dresses up, you know, it's different. You know, the, the even the eating habits are different. The way they move around, the way they interact with their friends are different. Now they have the mobile phone with them, smartphone. 
and everything is done through the smartphone. It was not so in during our days. So I think we need to understand, you know, the changing times. Times are changing. Heraclitus said, right? So change is the only permanent thing, right? So uh, even in our Hindu philosophy, we believe everything is passing, right? There is a Hindu philosophy that states everything is passing, nothing is permanent. So that's what makes our, as human beings, right? Typical to, to you know, to adapt to changes. And that is what I think is, uh, we we're talking about, you know, e-content. So who are these millennials? Right. So millennials, we call them Gen, Gen Y, Generation Y. So millennials, who are they? You can just come down to the fourth line. Uh, uh, sorry, the fifth one, shaping events, explosion of the internet and the Great Recession. So I think we will just uh, uh, look into this part, explosion of the internet. So they are, you know, they belong to the internet age. Next, we move to Generation Z or Z. You can look at them, Generation Z, you know, they might look very, you know, queer or very different, okay? Or, or very, uh, you know, uh, maybe, but then that's what they are. So what actually uh, shapes these, this generation Z or Z? Internet access at a young age. See, they are exposed to the internet from very young age. And I think this is what I think we need to understand. So we are dealing with the generation that looks into the world for them. Uh, the mobile phone is the window to the, to the world. They look through the window of the mobile phone. That is the smartphone. WhatsApp, what WhatsApp say they believe, right? Yeah, yeah. So Facebook, Instagram, they are so creative, you know, in, you know, in, in, in uh, you know, creating memes, right? All of us would know. So they are different, right? So they are different. And, uh, and this is what we need to understand. Next, so I tried to, uh, you know, uh, enroll into one of the courses on uh, Swayam, and uh, this is one that I came upon. This is uh, that the subject education and technology. So uh, here in this YouTube video, you can even go into YouTube and watch this video. Beautiful video. A lot of videos are there. Dr. Nazia Hazan says, educational technology helps in improving teaching and learning process reaching the preset goals of education through systematic organization of learning procedures and processes. So it might look a little complicated, but then what we need to understand is we need to con concentrate on systematic organization of learning procedures and processes, right? And that is what is, I think he counted is. Next, we are moving to, for new generation learners, it is required to have a sound knowledge of educational technology and its effect on teaching learning process. So if you want to create an impact on the learner, new generation learners, you know, we are, you know, it is, we are required to have a sound knowledge of educational technology, given, you know, uh, how, how challenging it is, you know, to come on this, this platform, to get connected with others, you know, that's very, very important, right? Right, still we uh, have trouble, you know, in logging in, you know, how to join in and still technology seems to be, you know, very, uh, you know, fearful, right? Right, and, and so it is very important that we, we familiarize ourselves with technology, right? We learned to use technology, we learned to use the apps, software, you know, and which we will look into in, in the coming uh, pages, okay. You can also um, uh, look at this UGC, UGC's website. You can, there is a list of uh, e-content URL, right? So there, you know, nobody interacts. No human person interacts. You find everything is, you know, uh, you know, you go into this and you look for the information and, you know, you learn, you know, self-learning, right? So self-directed learning, right? We are moving from teacher-centered learning to to learn a centered uh, process, right? This is what we call we changing times. So we let's also have a look at 
uh, this uh, uh, website of National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC. Again, it comes under uh, MHRD. So assessment and accreditation, everybody's familiar with this and everybody struggles, you know, to get uh, the best rank possible from NAC. So on the NAC's uh, uh, the whole page, you would find this. I have just taken a screenshot. So that's why I provided the, 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 the link, the reference here below uh, at the bottom of the slide. So uh, there is a list of benefits of accreditation mentioned there. Of course, you can, you can uh, you, we may not have time to go through everything and I would like to, you to concentrate on one. See, institutions to initiate innovative and modern methods of pedagogy. And that is what is very, very important. So institutions to initiate innovative and modern methods of pedagogy. So are we innovative, right? Are we, you know, are our methods innovative and modern? I think we need to ask ourselves, how much time do we spend in learning this technology, educational technology? Are we trying to bring in some newness into our teaching into the classroom every day? So that is what we, that is where e-content helps us, right? Nice. So next we are moving to NERF, N-A-R-F. So the expansion is National Institutional Ranking Framework. Again, this uh, comes under, uh, right. Right. So this is a national uh, uh, institutional ranking framework. So the rankings were recently uh, re released recently. And again, it's a good news that, that I would like to share with you that Loyola College has secured the sixth rank, you know, in the college's category, you know, uh, uh, in the Indian NERF rankings 2020. And, and I think it is, of course, the management is, you know, uh, uh, role is very important. At the same time, I think the core of every institution is the teachers and the to the admin uh, staff. I think we should not forget them, right? Of course, the teachers contribute to academics and admin and staff, you know, the, the ground support they provide. So I think teachers, uh, we need to understand we are the assets of an institution. An institution, I think, is, you know, doesn't stand out by its uh, uh, monumental buildings, right? The infrastructure, I think it's the human beings there. It's the teachers, of course, and the students. And the students are the nucleus of this whole, you know, uh, uh, process. And I think this is what, it is not, you know, uh, that uh, I, I understand NERF is not trying to, you know, see kind of how we are doing, but I think NERF is trying to motivate us, you know, to improve our standards, to improve our quality. You know, that is, I think is, NERF rankings to, uh, you know, uh, uh, try to tell us. Okay, now, uh, so we are on the, the same page of NERF. Uh, I think I, I, we might be familiar with the parameters, right? So we have uh, six uh, parameters, if I'm not wrong. So this I've taken from the website. And um, uh, there are six parameters. One is a TLR, then we have research and professional practice graduation outcome, outreach and inclusivity, and perception, peer perception. Now, I'd like to you to concentrate on the first one, dear participants, teaching, learning resources, we call it TLR. See, this is where I think today's discussion, you know, has a relevance to. These parameters are related to the core activities of any place of learning. Now, I think what is, what NAC is looking into is how are we, ex you know, conducting our activities in the classrooms, right? And outside the classrooms, how do we develop, how, we, how do we transfer knowledge to students, skills and other, you know, abilities to students? And how, what is the quality of our teaching? What is the quality of the, the tools that we, the materials we use? And I think the, it is e-content helps us with variety. You can uh, uh, show, you can bring in images, podcasts, you can bring videos, you know, you can bring in uh, 
animation into teaching, you know, and I think that is a very big advantage. So teaching, learning resources. And I think it's good to have, go for a poll now. So I'm just going to, not a poll actually, it's a, it's a kind of a quiz. Uh, Deepa, can we do the first quiz now? Yes, sir, you can start. Yes. Yes. Uh, now there's a question here. Uh, for assessment and accreditation, uh, sorry, it's weightage, one word, weightage given by NAG under the criterion infrastructure mm -hmm. and learning resource is. So can you type in your answers, participants? So what is the weightage for infrastructure and learning resource? Okay, so people are still entering the responses. Okay, so 150 seems to be the highest. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, so um, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, so the, yes, the answer is 100. You know, this is uniform for all uh, you know, categories of institutions. So it is 100, it is okay. Now it's going up, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much participants. So you can check into the uh, website of NAC and then go get uh, familiarize yourselves with the, uh, with the parameter, you know, with the details, right? Weightage given for infrastructure and learning resource, you know, is uh, 100, you know, that is the weightage given. Thank you very much, right. So please remember, and this is all, you know, uh, you know uh, depends on how well we use our technology and resources. Okay. Next. Right. Next, uh, next, I would like you to have a look at this. Uh, we'll just quickly move. We have uh, just uh, some more time left and, okay, fine. Good. Right. So uh, another one I wanted to tell you is the Yamhachadi's project. This is Vidya Mitra. Of course, Vidya is, uh, you know, knowledge. Mitra is a friend, yes? Uh, so it's uh, beautifully coined. So it's an integrated e-content portal of the MHRD. It's uh, an MHRD project. Now you can see, it's just a kind of a, it's a screenshot that I've taken. So it offers a gateway to all learners, e-content portal. Now, I think it would be good to have a good uh, look at these, you know, resources and then see how uh, important they are and say how much of importance is given by the MHRD, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, or to e-content. How important is e-content in today's, uh, you know, scenario? I think it, this helps would help us to understand. And next, uh, uh, I just like just for a change, you know, I thought of you know taking up, you know, we could learn something. We could learn from, uh, you know, animals, right? Okay, and other living beings, non. Uh, human beings as well. So I would like you to look at the, uh, you know, the left uh, side of the slide. You would uh, first, okay, please have a look at the, uh, the image here. You would see uh, uh, wolves, you know, making the way. Probably they are migrating, you know, from one place to another. You can just, I'll just go through it. So we can all learn an invaluable leadership lesson from this pack of wolves. The three in front are old and sick. They walk in front to set the pace. The next five are the strongest. They protect the front side from an attack. Then the middle group is fully protected. You can see that. The five behind them are also among the strongest. They protect the back side. And the last wolf, I hope you are able to see. Anyway, you see, you see the blue color arrow mark there and that's where you would find it, okay? So don't worry if you can't see. So that's where you say. So the last wolf is the leader. He ensures no one is left behind. He keeps the pack tight and on the same path. So that's what it says. So being a leader is not about being in front. 
It's about uh, taking care of your team. So, so my dear participants, I think uh, uh, what I think e-content is trying to say, it's not that, you know, we need to, uh, you know, struggle to learn technology and that, you know, it's going to be an additional pressure on us. We already, you know, have a lot of other things, the preparation of lesson plan and other things. And I think it's time that, you know, even our college would be coming out, you know, would be, we will be asked to, you know, uh, 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 mention in the lesson plan, you know, what technology, what sort of technology we are using in our classrooms. Okay, so uh, we could be even pulled up, you know, for not using it in the coming days. So I think it, we just, we, we become alert now about this. So let us think about this, you know, if you want to cater to all sorts of students, we have students from different walks of life, different background, socially, economically, right? And, you know, even uh, intellectually, you know, they have people have different ways that they want to learn in different ways. We have a variety of students and a variety is something beautiful, right? And it's like the wolves, how the, 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 the team, the boss takes care of, I think, this is what I think we need to do with the help of e-content. Next, I would like to look at uh, this uh, uh, professors and uh, educators. Um, I got this inspiration inspiration from the uh, you know main speaker of our you know for our last uh, uh, graduation day. So he's an alumnus of Loyola College and he is the director general of Deen Dayal Upadhyay Petroleum University, uh, uh, Gujarat. So it's about Atlantic salmon fish. You know, it's a, so beautiful and uh, uh, inspiration and stunning to know about the life of this uh, salmon fish. See, the speciality of this fish is that. They breed in fresh water and they move to salt water for survival. You know, fresh water, you always like, we like to drink fresh water. No, 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 no. We won't like to drink salt water, right? But you see the, the uniqueness of this fish, lifestyle of this fish, it breeds in fresh water and moves to salt water for survival. See, from freshness to saltiness. It's not that easy. It's, life is going to be very tough there. Now, see, it goes into the ocean swimming thousands of miles, you know, braving all the predators. And you can, you can look here and, uh, right, you can look here. Yeah, and it says 30 miles per day against the unrelenting current. They swim more than 2000 miles, you know, to get back to this fresh water. And without eating, even you can see this, how stunning their life is, you know, without eating fueled only by stored fat and phenomenal inborn determination, right? So they get back to the fresh water, swimming against the current, right? So up, you know, upstream, you know, to, 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 to survive, to, you know, to, 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 uh, to, pro, to, you know, to continue the, to make sure that the generation continues. Right? So this tells us that, you know, we need to adapt. Of course, adaptation is always not that easy. It's very challenging. It's very, you know, uh, it poses a lot of challenges, right? We need to swim in salt water, right? We may have to swim against the current, yes? So, and I think this is what I think we need to understand at this time of, uh, uh, you know, our uh, uh, the, uh, the time where we live now. Next is, so uh, I also came across this beautiful, you know, motivational uh, information uh, you know, 12 things students remember most about good teachers. I just picked out only one, creating interesting and applicable lessons. Students perceive care when professors extend extra effort to make their lessons and lectures applicable, engaging, and meaningful. I think these three words would be enough, you know, to sum up the whole, you know, um, uh, whole uh, mission of you know this uh, uh, technology, you know the whole aspect of technology using technology in our classrooms. To me, uh, so a student has said, Rosa, a family science student says, to me, caring happens when a professor enables me to learn and grow in a way that is most conducive to my learning style. I mean, so we have different students, categories of students. Now, we need to cater to all their needs, tastes, expectations. And I think when we provide in a variety in our teaching, I think we are able to make a very good impact. 
if we were able to provide, uh, you know, to make a multi-sensorial appeal to the students. Okay, right. Now, uh, I have spoken about the importance of, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, e-content. I think I would have understood why e-content is a teaching and learning tool. Mainly it's because it's, it brings innovation, it brings creativity to our teaching, it makes our teaching you know, very effective, learning very effective, it brings quality, it, it brings in you know, richness into, our, you know, into what we teach, and we will be able to you know, uh, respond to the needs, you know, uh, uh, academic excellence, I think it's the first one. We may, I think, according to me, we may be a very nice teacher, right? We may be nice to everybody. I think that isn't enough. I think uh, every teacher's, I think, is ability, you know, your, your ability as a teacher, right? The core of us teachers is that how much of, you know, outcomes that we can achieve in, in whatever we're going to teach. What am I, what did I prepare, you know? What did I teach? What am I teaching and how am I going to teach better tomorrow? So, so this is what I think uh, e-content is all about. It is not simply about technology. It's not simply about, you know, learning a few apps, but it, the, uh, what is more uh, uh, important is, you know, how we are going to transform this classroom. How, how will we going to transform these brains and hearts because they are going to decide the fate of our country, right? Unless we teach, you know, revolutions should take place in our classrooms. Then, you know, uh, the revolutions will uh, definitely, it will get reflected in our, in our society. So even our, the motto of our college is, you know, preparing men and women for others, for the society, right? I think every college tries to do the same. You know, if you, the, the logo or the motto of every institution is, I think more or less the same, you see? So molding minds and brains. So having discussed these and uh, uh, dear participants, uh, we are now moving to some practical sessions, right? So uh, as, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, we'll continue. So uh, as I actually headed the e-content uh, 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 committee that was, interested with the task of creating e-content videos of our professors, right? And so, uh, so uh, I would like to share my own experiences as a person who was, uh, who had to be completely involved in this process, right? And I would like to thank uh, my institution for, you know, uh, uh, entrusting this responsibility on my shoulders and which in turn helped me. And I was actually, a, a I have no knowledge at all, but I'm able to share these things with you. It's because of, uh, you know, the exposure that our institutions give us. And I think which I would like to remain extremely grateful to uh, my institution, all others who have helped me. See, okay, all right. Uh, I think I think we, uh, you, you're all with me now. Thank you very much, uh, participants. Um, good. So there are three stages of e-content development. You know, I'm talking specifically about video content. I think that is going to be, I think is, uh, uh, it's, it, it is, I think quite effective in our classrooms, right? So you can, you can capture your uh, lecture and present it in the form of video, or uh, uh, you can do, you know, in different ways. But now I'm talking about e-content and uh, just a small introduction, e-content is different from e-lecture. Sometimes we are confused. E-lecture is what a, a, a professor teaches in the classroom. It is just a video recorded or it is live streamed could be or it could be a, a recorded video could be relayed for, for, for later use. That is e-lecture. Now e-content is very, very different. And I'm very thankful to our, uh, uh, the department, the uh, HOD of our uh, VISCOM department, Dr. Chinnap, and I had a chance to go with him to, you know, uh, he was trying to help uh, enlighten all the uh, uh, professors about this. And he said, an e-content video, in an e-content video, it's only the first five to 10 seconds, 
the, the presenter appears on screen and the last 10 to 15 seconds, you know, during the, you know, uh, the remaining time, you are only use, going to insert images, powerful images in between. And that's what makes, you know, maximize the learning, right? Right? So uh, the images, animation, you know, related images, and that is e-content in each other. And so e-content is different, you know, recorded e-lecture -e is different, you know, e-content is much more effective according to me, right? So how we went about with this video content production, right? So uh, those of you who want to know more about it, please go to our Loyola College's website, loyalacollege.edu, uh, www.loyalacollege.edu. On the home page, you will find e-content and you will be there about 150 videos. You can go into this and you will be able to understand uh, a lot more. You know about what I'm going to explain. So there are three stages in this process. One is pre-production, production, and post-production. Now, what is the first one? This is a, this is a pre-production. Right, now this pre-production, I think it's a very, very crucial stage, very crucial. And the most important one, I would say, uh, I remember, you know, one of the collectors of Madurai uh, saying once, he said, when he was addressing uh, a group of audience, he said, when you plan well, 80% of the work is done. So, what it, you know, execution is 20%. You know, many years ago, I got, that's very fresh in my mind, even today. And that, I think, has been very helpful in, in whatever I do. I'm sure it would be the same with you too. So development and validation of e-content. So please remember what we are going to publish on social media or website on LMS, whatever platform it might be, please remember it is for the global audience. It's for the public view. It's not going to be with you. The moment you are going to publish, it goes out of your hands. It goes reached, you know, everyone, maybe in USA, USSR, any, any in Russia or Europe, anybody can, you know, have a access to it 24 seven. So, you know, it's very, very important. And it's again, another big challenge to my, my dear uh, uh, teachers, I think. Why? Because everybody is going to see, it is going to be a kind of a recorded, it is a document and you, we cannot commit errors there. There cannot be errors creeping in and later regret, right? We cannot afford to do that. So it becomes, it's a very, very challenging task, but I would say it's a very, very fulfilling task, satisfying task, once you have mastered it by practice. So how do we develop and validate? I'm going to show you very quickly. First one, see, this e-content can be used for providing lead-in. You know, when you're going to start a new unit, new topic, so you're going to use uh, a video, maybe it's a very short one. When you provide lead-in, let it may, please don't make it a 10-minute video, right? It should be just to trigger, just to spark, you know, something in the, in the minds of students. They may not know. For example, you're going to ta teach about Indian constitution, right? And you would like to show a kind of a, a, a video, produce a video to provide a lead-in, to lead students into the topic. So what you can do is, you can, you can, for example, you can, uh, you can produce a video where you can include, you know, all the, uh, you know, uh, the, the architects like Ambedkar, Negron, all the other people there. And maybe the, the principles, you know, the constitution was framed for, you know, the, 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 the basic principles, tenets of a constitution. So it's a very short video. It could be about the barter system, you know, how barter system was practiced in olden days for economics. Okay. So, it's for all of the subject. You can provide a lead in, and you can even use it for generating discussions. You will produce a video, right? And then develop a, a content where you can use it for generating discussions. And I think uh, uh, generating discussions, according to me, is the most effective, I think, a procedure in, in teaching learning process, I think. I think it's, it's time we stop lecturing, you know, full hour, right? I think. I, when I was with, with the British Council, every time I was cautioned, you know, that is a, a teacher talking time, students talking time, 
TTT, ESTT. So TTT should be 40% and ESTT students talking time should be 60%. So I think our teaching becomes very effective when we generate discussions in our, in our classrooms. So we use content, you know, with the, with the very good, you know, compressed content, you know, quality content that will, you know, uh, uh, take students into, you know, it, make them think, right? Make them think, you know, it will make them, you know, uh, uh, you know, inquisitive, you know, to think further, more. So you can also use it for assessment. You can, you can play a, an e-content video and you can use it for assessment. You can customize it. And that is advantage of e-content, right? You can adapt the way you want. You can, you can prepare your e-content, you know, in such a way that would help your level of students, your, the, your, how your students want to learn, your style of student learning. For example, the students of Loyola may be different from students of Aditya College or uh, Mariana College, right? So it's very, uh, uh, you know, it's for the teacher to decide on and what sort of, uh, you know, what kind of, what, what, what should be the kind of content there should be. Even for revision, we can use it. And the next one I'd like to explain to you, uh, participants, is accuracy and appropriacy. That's what I talk, spoke about, accuracy in terms of information. It should be accurate. For example, uh, you know, uh, you are going to mention the year of independence, right? 1947, right? You cannot afford to make an error there, okay? Or the year in which uh, Shakespeare was born, the place where he was born. Or Karl Marx, the name of the, uh, the famous book by Karl Marx, right? So these are things, accuracy is very, very, very important. That is called uh, validation. Then we talk about appropriacy of the content. What do you mean by appropriacy? It could mean a lot of things, right? Like pitching your content to the level of students. And also we also know in the, the audience, you know, you cannot put everything into e-content, right? That's very important. There is genders, different people are this going for public view. So you need to be very careful about your cultural factors, you know, gender related factors and, you know, uh, 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 justice, right? Equality, these, you know, uh, 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 social, they should not be discriminatory, right? And that is what we call it appropriacy of the content. Next, we talk about coherence. I think some of you already know about it. So it's simple, it's called the flow of thought, right? It, it is a, it's a clear flow, but you're able to understand. That is coherence. Next is cohesion. It refers to the sequential order, sentence connection, physical structure, like for first, secondly, finally, to conclude, therefore. So when we use these uh, uh, linkers, you know, pointers, you know, it will help the audience the, or the, the students to understand it and, and, you know, understand it, you know, the, the unity, we call it unity, that's very, very important, whether the whole, uh, uh, content gives some one clear picture, and these two are important. Next, uh, grammar and punctuation. I think it's, I would say, as I am an English language teacher, and I think it is the most important one, I would say. The grammar, especially, we, we could make a lot of grammars, even professional spe speakers and writers could make, you know, grammatical errors. It's always good to edit it, to revise it, give it to another professor, maybe to. Uh, you know, to go through it and give the feedback, revise it, edit it again, re-edit it, and finally you get the text and the punctuation. And again, spelling is important. Why? Because the, you're going to get ready with the images now for post-production. I will explain that now. So sometimes a spelling errors, you could creep in in the images. Sometimes when you download images, there could be spelling errors. Doesn't mean that when you download something from Google, everything is fine. So we have to decide whether it's a, you know, the spelling is right. And again, when you download images, you need to download images with the good quality, right? Resolution. So you go to Google and the last option, there'll be uh, choose images, then go to tools, and then you select large. There's an option called large. Use only those. So when you, when you enlarge the image, you know, you know, it is still, it doesn't get, you know, uh, it doesn't break, right? So it's still clear. So use the image. Images uh, um, are very, very important because uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, you know. So images are very, very powerful now. So images and short videos can be inserted. 
to be kept ready for post production. So these images, uh, dear uh, participants, you know, uh, 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 you know, you must uh, get ready with at least you know several images. You know, every second you need to insert an image, or every two seconds you cannot have just five images for you know three minutes, right? That will not look you know uh, effective. Okay, so try to see you know you need to sit and think you know what image you need to spend time there is no other way next i think everybody knows plagiarism free you get the script ready and your script should be original please do not copy from anywhere you can borrow see that's very important you can borrow but you cannot copy verbatim you know that would be very risky and that would amount to breach of you know integrity academic integrity is very, very important. Copying is very easy, but then being original, think originally. Use authentic sources, right? Wikipedia is not an authentic source. Okay, YouTube, I don't know, I'm not very sure about it. But then you can use a kind of BBC website, it's an authentic source. CNN, okay? The Hindu, Indian Express, right? So uh, you can look for some certain videos, right? That are authentic sources, take from authentic sources. So uh, uh, give credit to the owner, acknowledge the source. I think these are something very, very basic. We cannot, we need to be very, very careful. Um, to be very, very careful about plagiarism and then ensure it's plagiarism free. Next is a production stage now. Now you've got ready with all the materials. Your script is ready. Now you go for video recording. Now I'm talking about our college. This is how we do it in a professional way, right? It might be a little expensive for others, but then I just want to present to you what it means to do it in a professional manner. So we have a blue mat studio where you will have all this blue color mat, you know, you know, stuck on the walls. You will have a background blue color and you have a teleprompter, you know, the news readers, you know, the news keeps scrolling and the teleprompter. So you just have to read it out, right? And next is the script that you prepare it has to be converted into RTF version, that is rich text format, because that is the only one suitable for this teleprompter, you know, uh, the ordinary doc, doc file, you know, word file doesn't, you know, uh, support. Next, the voice recording, again, as a, an English language teacher, you know, I would like to uh, again insist on these things. When you record your voice, the pronunciation is very important. Stress, it is not about the mental stress we are going through or a physical stress during this COVID, it's about the word stress. For example, I'm going to pronounce three words. Photograph, photographer, photographic. So now look at the stress I've given, you know? So uh, the way it gives stress, you know, it, it tells something about the meaning of it, right? So that is what is very, very, important. You need to know about the word stress. Get familiarize yourself. Intonation. We have rising intonation, falling intonation. Are you going to Bangalore tomorrow? Rising intonation. Right? You say, uh, my name is Charles Duray. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a falling intonation. So you've got to, you also talk about rhythm. Rhythm is a kind of, a, English is called a musical language, right? So so, we, so we, it's like more or less a singing, that's called the rhythm, rhythmic. So again, modulation of voice is very important. You no, know, it should be not be monotonous delivery. There should be variation, improvisation should be there. So it comes by practice. So the pace, neither too slow nor too fast. Okay, so that's very, very important. Understand that there is going to be a global audience. So adjust your pace accordingly. Adjust your pronunciation accordingly. So what is very important, it's not the style of pronunciation, it is the clarity that you're going to provide. So your students will not be able to understand if you're going to, you know, uh, even if you are a very professional speaker in English, if you're going to, you know, uh, show up all that you know, many students might not follow, students from especially, you know, underprivileged background. So the target group is more important than, you know, anything else, keep them in mind. It's a pleasant look, of course, right? So we can just do a little makeup and as advised by the, the technician and not too much, okay? All right. And then look straight into the camera. So be calm and then everything will be okay. 
So when you stand in front of the, uh, uh, you know, teleprompter, it might frighten you. Or did you give you a fright? But don't worry. It comes by practice. I have a student. Many of our teaching faculty have, you know, have, you know, done quite well after a good practice, right? So the other important one is please stick to the script. Even when you're doing at home, once you have pre prepared a script, please stick to it. Don't try to change it when you're recording it. It will cause a lot of confusion. You will make terrible errors. You will have to redo it. You will have to waste your time. So there is no deviation. Confirm your text, validate it, and go for recording. Next is, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, we come to this, uh, uh, right. So uh, we have a little poll now, uh, dear participants. Okay, so just to uh, awaken us again, right? Okay, to make us again active. So now we are going to have another poll. Uh, so can we have the poll, uh, Deepa ma'am, please? Yes, sir, poll is open. Yes. You can start. Yes, so which one of these is Mac-based video editing software? Come on, right, yes. Yes, okay. okay. So I'm going to give you a few more seconds this time. Okay, so Premiere Pro is leading. Okay, the second comes the Final Cut Pro. Okay, all right, good. So more people, come on, come on, come on, right? We have a few more seconds to go. Thank you, it's very good. Wonderful participation, superb. It's fantastic to see so many people joining in, very good. Yes. Okay, so 34, 43, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, participants. Okay, so uh, the answer is Final Cut Pro. Okay, it's called FCP, and uh, uh, you can uh, you can actually you know you can check it you know and then for yourselves and uh, uh, this uh, uh, the the answer is which one of these is a Mac based video editing software? It is uh, Final Final. So it's a Final Cut Pro is the answer. Okay, good, thank you. So uh, thank you very much. So let's uh, uh, let's move on. So now we are coming to the post production uh, post production uh, uh, stage, the third stage. So editing, right? So uh, prominent editing software available uh, now these days, or one is Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, and another one is FCP Final Cut Pro, right? FCP, and in our college we use the FCP software to do it, right? So you can uh, check into our website and look at the, watch the videos and look at the quality of the videos, right? Done at the, you know, the Blue Mat Studio. And in the, we have a separate editing suite uh, with the, you know, this uh, Mac computers uh, and FCP. And a lot of our students are, you know, hella, you know uh, joining with us, you know, in production piece. Inserting images and videos appropriately. Here, I think the presenter of the video or the, uh, the, the, the one who is a professor concerned should go there and if he, the professor knows it's fine, otherwise sit with the uh, technician and then try to insert the images you know you had got ready with and probably smaller videos, you know, you can, you know, make sure that it's plagiarism free and then you can, uh, 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 you can insert them. That's very important, right? Editing. Then uh, once that everything is done, quality check is as a must, you know, you need to check the quality whether it can be uploaded. It is ready for publishing, right? That is important. Approve the output if it meets the standards. It's very important. Next is to share the content then. Uh, once you're sure, on social media, website, 
or LMS or Moodle or Google Classroom. Okay, you can even think of starting your own YouTube channels, professors. You know, it's not at all difficult, right? Even small, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the young students are doing it. And uh, that's it about post-production. So uh, Rina Ranger, you might have come across this on the website, is a British community leader, politician and British woman. She says, when we connect, we don't diminish ourselves, but we should see ourselves as candles, I think. Basically, we are, are, we are called upon to connect ourselves with, uh, with, uh, with our students, you know? We are not simply talking about, uh, you know, ye content, but I think it's more what is this a connectivity that is going to, you know, we are going to make a connectivity stronger, you know, the bonding, you know, we are going to create a better bonding, stronger connect, and that's what it says. So we are going to be like a candles. Next is, I just wanted to tell you, you know, one of my students is, uh, you know, his name is Subhash. You know, uh, he's in third year digital journalism. And, you know, he's already started his YouTube channel. And uh, the, it's called, uh, uh, the name is Orwurla Ur Raja. Says beautifully. It's, of course, it's in Tamil. And you can try uh, to listen to it, right? To watch this on your YouTube, Orwurla Ur Raja. And I just spoke to him. He said, he's about the 14th story. He said he worked on Premiere Pro. So look at this, you know. These are our students today. There are hundreds and thousands of Subhashes today. And with these students that we are going to interact. So we cannot afford to go, go on with the talk and chalk and talk method. We need to, you know, brace up ourselves, right? Catch up with the technology. So that's where we talk about CPD, continuing professional development. So nothing is difficult, teachers. Is everything is going to be possible with practice. I think many of our professors are already doing, and, and I think if you are able to spend a little more time, I think it would be, it, everything would be possible. Right, so um, I wanted to, uh, this is a very important, uh, very, you know, uh, motivational quote I often, uh, you know, like to have a look at. So it says, a thousand journey of, uh, sorry, a journey of uh, a thousand miles begins with a single step. A journey of thousand miles, it doesn't matter, it's because of a single step. So nothing is challenging, you know, it's never too late. If you think it's too late, don't worry. I think it's time. Uh, and I, I, I would like to just to tell you that, you know, I did an e-course uh, uh, sponsored by the British Council, e-moderating. The first uh, module was on technical skills. I didn't know ABC of that. The first thing that I went to was to my students. I went to them and I asked them to explain. And they explained to me what is what, and I was able to complete that course successfully. And I'm, I'm even happy to share that I got nine out of nine points, you know, in the in the course. Uh, so what I would to say is, you know, it's a, by practice everything becomes possible, and I'm sure you all know about it. So uh, the uh, I think what I would like to uh, uh, share with you is this little again, this little quote. Uh, uh, spend a little extra time doing something that you really love. If you really love our students, I think we will spend a little extra time. And what makes our profession noble is that, you know, we, we don't work for money alone, right? So we work because, you know, uh, we want to transform individuals, right? The transformation. So formation, so information, we give information, then formation, then transformation. And I think e-content is basically uh, you use e-content to transform individuals. And so thank you very much, uh, uh, everyone. It has been a great opportunity and, uh, uh, you know, interacting with you. And uh, I, would, I, would, uh, I would like to honestly admit that this is the first opportunity that I've got to address uh, so many people online and... Uh, uh, and uh, what I have shared is uh, from what I have learned from others, what I have learned from my experiences. And I'm sure we all have the responsibility of, you know, uh, enriching each other with our own experiences through online platform like this, thanks to uh, Zoom, you know, that has provided this platform, digital platform. And I think uh, uh, one thing that I learned from, uh, after doing, from my e-moderator course is that, you know, Technology, you know, online education, online learning, teaching, you know, is going to transform society, it's going to bring society together. It's going to create, build a community, right? 
So community building is the core of online education. So with these words, I would like to, uh, you know, end my uh, uh, session. And uh, you can uh, uh, look at my name here. I'm Charles Ray. My phone number is given. My uh, uh, yeah, Gmail is, uh, my mail ID is there. If you want further clarification or more information about what I have shared with you, please feel free to uh, uh, contact me. I would be very happy to help you and support you with whatever I, is possible. So thank you very much. I thank both the institutions, great institutions, uh, for uh, you know inviting me to be uh, the resource person today. And thank you, and more. Uh, I would like to thank the participants. You know, you have uh, taken trouble to register, or uh, you know, uh, through Zoom, or watch this uh, uh, entire session uh, on YouTube. I would like to thank every one of you. I would like to uh, appreciate the efforts of the the, the management of uh, both colleges and the all the organizers, especially Deepa, ma'am, and Chitra, ma'am. I think they were in touch with me, close touch with me. You know, for the, quite a few days. And I also thank Father Justin, uh, uh, Director of uh, uh, the Office of Media Relations, Chennai, and I also work with the, in the same, uh, you know, Office of Media Relations. I work with him very closely, and I would like to thank him very sincerely for, you know, giving. You know, he's the one, you know, uh, who actually gave me this. Uh, 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 he connected me, you know, to these uh, colleges, right? So thank you for the Justin. Thank you, everyone, and I'm sure we will meet again. Okay, on another digital platform. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Now I request Dr. Dharma Paramal to deliver a word of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Sir. Am, I, am I visible, madam? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you. So, a very good afternoon to all. So, in the present era, particularly at this time of crisis, uh, when technology is playing a vital role uh, at all level of education system, this webinar uh, on e-content serve, serves the exact, exact purpose. So, on behalf of the Department of Business Administration, Aditana College of Arts and Science, I take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks to all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar. So at this outset, I would like to acknowledge my sincere gratitude for our chief guest and resource person, Mr. I. Charles Durai, Assistant Professor, Loyola College, for his excellent coverage on today's topic. His insightful lecture showed the depth of his understanding and his years of experience and research. So it gave deep insights into the topic and also revealed some interesting facts. The awareness that he created on e-content, the usage of online materials, and the use of multiple technology-aided learning. Multiple technology. Let's continue, sir. Continue. Okay. Okay, madam. The use of multiple technology-aided learning strategies is the need of the hour for not only the teachers, but for, for, but for also to the learners. Uh, you have autographed your work with the excellence, sir, and we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. So I would like to place on record our gratitude for our chairman, 3S, Born Supermanian Aditan, who supervises and backs us, at, uh, backs us at all times possible. And I am thankful to our honorable secretary, Dr. S. Jayakumar, for his constant support and encouragement. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our principal, Dr. S. Dr. D. S. Magendran, who is an idol of knowledge and experience and an inspiration to all of us. I thank you, sir, for your enthusiastic support. I thank Dr. C. V. Maithali, professor from Raniana College, for the presidential address. And thank you, ma'am. I must mention my deep sense of appreciation for the organizing committee. Dr. A. Andoni Sagaya Chitra, head and assistant professor in BBA, Aitana College, and Dr. P. Pragasi Arul Jodi, head and associate professor in history, Ranina College, who ran, ran, ran around the class to make this webinar a grand success. Thank you. I also thank the organizing secretary, Dr. A. Deba, uh, associate professor in history, Ranina College, and the organizing members 
for their unflinching coordination in making this webinar a success. At this time of crisis, more than 100 participants participant participating in this webinar is a huge success in itself. A special thanks to all the teacher and student participants for their active participation and involvement and their willingness to participate in the webinar. So thank you again for such a useful and memorable morning. It was a pleasure being with you all and we hope you all join us again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now the session is open for interaction. If anyone want to ask question, you can raise your hands. You will be unmuted. Or people can even type their questions in the chat box, ma'am, and you can uh, maybe you can read out the questions. We have already typed some questions, sir. Okay, uh, can we take those questions first, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we can take up those questions, ma'am, now. There's a question from uh, Sasikala. Yeah, please. Uh, she's asking, we had a lot of rural background students. How can we rectify the technical problem for the online classes? Is it possible, sir? She has asked like that. Uh, yes, <laughs> ma'am. Actually, this is, uh, I think, one of the biggest challenges that we are facing, not only now here, even throughout the world. Yeah. So um, I think um, uh, we, we, the only thing we can do is, you know, first, uh, we need to first, we, know, we need to talk to them, you know, what their problems are. And uh, uh, if there is a, c a connectivity issue, I don't know how far we can help them out. Uh, but the only thing is some students are so poor and uh, they are unable to uh, buy, you know, a laptop or a computer, you know, the, the, or probably they may have the basic model mo mobile phone. Uh, but I think we need to talk to them and then try to find out what the problems are and then if the college, you know, probably in, in a way they can support the students. They may not be able to support all of them, but at least, you know, they find a way to, uh, you know, kind of empower them. Uh, but even I have a very big, uh, uh, you know, I have actually no answer and I cannot, uh, I am not in a position to respond to this question because everywhere, it's, the problem is everywhere, right? The poor uh, cannot, you know, poor are also suffering now because of this, uh, online education, there are a lot of issues coming up. But I think uh, we can still continue to explore, you know, how as uh, educators, our academicians, you know, we can continue to empower students, right? So we need to explore, you know, how they can be helped. Uh, and as educators, we can find ways to uh, to support them. Yes, it's a, it's a big challenge, right? Yes. Thank you, sir. Another question from Muthura Malingam. Yes. He's asking e-content and online teaching or against teaching community. What's your opinion? He's asking yes or no, sir. Um, see, I would say it is not against online, online uh, you know, uh, uh, it's not going to be a kind of a threat in any way. See, uh, as we said, you know, times are changing, right? Times are changing. Now, when uh, you can look at the students, right? Uh, nobody likes to use a notebook, you know, to write down notes. Uh, you know, during revision, I see a lot of students, you know, scrolling through their WhatsApp messages, you know, and uh, that is how the students are. I think it's, uh, uh, it's, we need to adapt, you know, and sometimes what happens is, you know, we kind of, uh, we have a certain kind of resistance, you know, when a new thing is introduced, we usually have resistance because we have fears, as you said. But I would say uh, that, you know, once uh, our teachers, we equip ourselves well, once we are well equipped with the technology, I think you can do wonders. I tell you, you know, how many people are yearning, you know, millions online through online education. You talk about Baiju, right? Udemy. So these online platforms, you know, how they are yearning money. They, they're using technology, right? The lot of platforms now that you're coming up and you know, all they're offering courses, this, that, you join this and offering webinars, free webinars, join our course. 
So, the, see, I, I tell you, a lot of courses being offered on, and of course, this is going to be a kind of, uh, uh, we might consider this a threat, but I think as personally, you know, if you're going to equip ourselves, if you're going to, uh, you know, understand, you know, the, the implications or the need for, you know, uh, learning this, using this technology, I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, threatening, right? Yes. I think new avenues, uh, sorry, uh, new, new, uh, new doors will open, right? Or new doors will be open, you know, when one door is shut, you know, the other door will open. So it all depends on how we adapt to change. So look at the salmon fish, right? How it adapts to different climates, right? Two different, two extreme climates, it's able to adapt. And uh, it, it is not worried about the predators, right? The whales, the, the dolphins, the sharks. It, it keeps, you know, it keeps, it, it, it continues its journey. Doesn't matter what the challenges are there. So uh, let us convert these challenges into successes. But I tell you, please, uh, the UG is going to come down very strong. I mean, the MHRD, now we have seen, it is going to make it very, it compulsory. Even we, they might move to blended learning and automatically online learning. Now it's a very good platform where you can enhance your visibility, right? You know, it's a world wide web, right? So don't worry. It is you, the, the whole global audience is yours, right? Try to reach out to everyone. Yeah? Yes. Participants, if you want to ask some question, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Yes, please. Yes. No one is there, sir. We can conclude the meeting then. Yeah. And there was also a question. I think uh, there's a, a good question. Uh, of course, it was about, uh, uh, you know, rural areas. Uh, government school students, particularly in rural areas. Uh, and I think it's, again, a very big challenge, as he said. But I think that is the reason why government was distributing laptops, right, to students from, especially students studying in Tamil medium schools. That was one, I think, is a great initiative, you know. And, uh, uh, and, and I think uh, uh, it is... Uh, but I, I, I know, I think we all need to understand, even uh, the government is, you know, trying to um, push this, you know, with the school teachers. Even I know uh, uh, several teachers are doing the, uh, 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 cre uh, creating videos on their own using, I think, this webmaster or uh, so many uh, power director and all those things. They are doing it at home. So please, uh, uh, it's high time that, you know, we try to uh, create our own videos sitting at home using OBS studio, and there are other things are there. But I think uh, uh, a real support is required to students coming from less privileged backgrounds or remote areas, urban, uh, not sorry, uh, uh, semi-urban and rural areas and villages and so on. Of course, they really need our support, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, you're welcome, please, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Charles, sir, uh, for Thank your you, very informative and thought-provoking address. Sir. Very glad, sir. Wonderful, man. Wonderful. It was a great session, I think. Yes. I hope people enjoyed it. Yes. Thank, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Special yeah. thanks to Father Justin Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very Thank nice you. presentation. Uh, it shows your effort. Nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If I could... Be of some health, and I I would be the happiest person. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks sir. so much. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So bye, participants. Thank you, sir. So bye, Deepa, ma'am. You know everybody. Yes. Thank, thank you very much. For all the organizers. Special thanks to uh, technical team. One na one man RP team. Rogit. Okay. 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 So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah. Thank you. I just take one photograph. Just take one photograph, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So bye, man. Bye.